a warm welcome to you on this Easter Sunday. The Free North Church family comes together, although we are in our various homes, we're able to join together to pray for one another, to pray for our city, for our nation and for our world. It is so good to know that every Sunday is the reminder that Christ is risen, but especially once a year we set aside time with Christians around the globe to celebrate the living Jesus, the one who was dead and behold he is alive forevermore. Our call to worship on this Easter Sunday comes from Psalm 118, adapted for today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As I welcome you to this service, I want us to just take a moment to commit one another to God in prayer. God, you are a loving God and you in faithful love raised your son, Jesus, from the dead. We know that your word tells us that you have declared him to be the Son of God with power and authority by his resurrection. We ask that not only in your eyes, but in the eyes of the angels and human beings whom you have made, that Jesus will be seen today for who he is, your glory, the one who is filled with your truth and light and love. May the nations bow down and worship and may we fall before the one who is the Lamb upon the throne. Thank you, Lord, that he bears marks on his hands and on his feet, that he suffered for others, that he died to pay for sin. But thank you that he lives and that he remembers those for whom he died. Comfort our hearts today in knowing that God is with us where we are, and may we know your help as a people and nation in the trial of this particular time. Bless those who rule over us. Restore to health, we ask, the Prime Minister. Bless the government in Scotland and in the United Kingdom, in Wales and Northern Ireland, in the nations of Europe and the world. And in this time of a great global epidemic, we remember rich and poor in various parts of the earth, grieving and struggling and afraid. We roll our burdens away, just as the stone at the tomb was rolled away. And we do it in faith because we give our cares and worries to you. And you have told us that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. May we call on you now in faith and may your word come alive for us and speak to us may this worship transform us and may this message go out from every church around our city and nation today that your son god's lamb takes away sin and that he is alive forever all glory to you father son and spirit pardon and forgive our sins through Jesus we pray. Amen. It's lovely to welcome you. And can I just encourage you to keep visiting our website and our social media channels. There's a very active Facebook page for the congregation. And the Sunday School have a brilliant Facebook page. And it's been great to see pictures of the younger folk from our congregation enjoying some surprises uh, good, good books and puzzle books and uh, things like that to do some challenges through this extended Easter holiday. May God's blessing in particular be on the children in our families and in our church family. 
Now we're going to lift up our voices in praise to God, singing together the Scottish Psalter, Psalm 100, all people that on earth do dwell. Let's praise God. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about, they suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? I'm really grateful to the young people in our church who are so involved, and it was great to have that part of the Easter story read for us from the beginning of the resurrection story in Luke chapter 24 by Seamus McKeever. A great job, thank you Seamus. One resource that I find very helpful is the New City Catechism and it has uh, questions and answers about the Christian faith. It also has helpful prayers and I want to just pray now for those who are particularly affected by the epidemic that has shut down our country and to use the words of a prayer from the New City Catechism that reflects on Jesus being risen from the dead. The prayer from the New City Catechism goes like this. Maker of heaven and earth, make the startling claims of our faith come alive to us. Let us not divorce theological truth 
from the history of your salvation, which occurred in time and space. Let us not waver in unbelief, but rest our lives upon the truth that you raise the dead. Amen. Lord, we specially want to pray for those who may be unwell or fearful or close to death. And we pray for those who are caring for them, our health service and those in nursing homes and those caring for family members, those who are self-isolating and those who have particular needs. We think of people who maybe have had their treatment for serious conditions interrupted by the focus on those who are suffering with the COVID symptoms. We pray your hand of mercy to be on all who are going through bereavement and trouble and sickness. Thank you, risen Jesus, that you could weep for those who had died. Thank you, risen Jesus, that you wipe away the tears from our eyes. We place each other and those who are particularly burdened into your care today. Amen. Going to sing to God's praise an Easter hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. All creation join to say hallelujah. We're turning to the Word of God together. Last Sunday we began to read together from the Gospel of John and I particularly focused on the opening five verses. The amazing introduction to John's Gospel is full of the truth about the Word who became flesh, the Lord Jesus. And that is the Word that was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday. I want to read just now verses 6 to 13 from the first chapter of John's Gospel. John 1, 6 to 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. And we do thank God for his word. I want to share with you some thoughts about that reading and particularly to try to answer the question, what does God send to you this Easter? The Bible tells us about a sending God, a missionary God, if you like. And the Easter story, the story that Christ is risen from the dead, is a story that we cannot keep to ourselves. We have to share it. It's maybe surprising that the mood changes in verse 6 of John chapter 1, there are these grand descriptions of the Word who was with God. And we begin to wonder, well, who is he? Who is this Word who is God? Who is this Word who is on a level with God? Who is this Word who created everything? And yet John turns around from, from that to show us a human being, a person. And from verse 6 to 13, he introduces us to that person who was sent by God. So I've got three parts to the talk today. First of all, God sent a man named John. This Easter, we're reminding ourselves that part of our Christian story is that there was a prophet, a great prophet, sent to us by God, whose name was John. And he came to get us ready, to get the world ready for the appearance of our Saviour. God is in the business of sending. After all, God sent his own Son to us. That's what the four Gospels are all about. And as the gospel stories unfold, we see that Father and Son are in agreement to send the Holy Spirit. So much of John's gospel is about Jesus promising the Spirit to the church. And then at the end of the four gospels, God sends the church. You are sent. I am sent. Easter is a day to proclaim Christ is risen. Easter is a day to be engaged in global mission. Easter is a day to reach Inverness or to reach your children, to reach your neighbours, to reach your family. Perhaps just now we're forced to use the phone or social media to communicate. But even as we do that, it's good to remember that it wasn't an angel God sent to prepare the world. It was a man. God sent a man called John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Not the John who wrote this gospel, but John the Baptist. And at one level, he's just like us. He's ordinary, indeed quirky, in some ways a strange man. But he's a man God used. And God is in the business of using and sending ordinary women and ordinary men. At the end of the Gospels, it's some women who are sent, trembling and bewildered from the tomb, to say, the Lord is risen. And the men, they are sent with the same story. Those disciples who went from grief and brokenness to 
ecstatic joy. The tomb was empty. The core truth in the first chapter of John's Gospel is that God sent his Son. But part of God's sending of his Son is this gift. God sent a man named John. That's the first thing. The second thing is just to note that that man God sent was very great. John the Baptist was one of the greatest human beings who ever existed. In the 10th chapter of this gospel, his greatness is summed up like this. John 10 verse 40, Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days. There he stayed. And many people came to him and they said, this is their assessment of John the Baptist, they said, though John never performed a sign, he never performed a miracle, all that John said about this man was true. You could rely on John the Baptist to tell you the truth about Jesus. I don't know if we really appreciate how great a man John the Baptist was. Angels were sent to announce his birth. That doesn't happen every day. The Holy Spirit inspired a hymn, a song about the child when he was born. The only other person I can think of with these two uh, facts being true of their birth is the birth of Jesus himself. John the Baptist is in a special category. Heaven draws attention to his birth in an almost unique way. There's John and there's Jesus. John is very great. The four Gospels focus on his career and on how he prepared the way for Jesus. And here in the opening verses of John's Gospel, we are told that he came to be a witness, to give his testimony on the side of Jesus. And his witness was that Jesus is the bright and shining light that this dark world needs. John the Baptist was clear. John says, I'm not the light. I'm not the one you need, but the true light, indeed the only light for all mankind that will lighten our path, the true light is coming into the world. Get ready. He's coming. He's the word. And light and life come through him. What was John's ministry all about? In verse 7 we're told, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. We're going to find as we go through John's Gospel that again and again this is a book about reasons to believe. John the Baptist was the man sent by God so that you would believe. And John the Baptist was a very great man. But his greatness is specially seen in this. He's always pointing away from himself to Jesus. He's always saying, look at that one. Look over there. Here comes Jesus. Look, the Son of God, the Word of God, the Lamb of God, God's Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. The greatest thing we could do at Easter and all through our whole year is to be a witness and point others to Jesus, as John did. So God sent a man named John, and the man God sent was very great. And the third, the last thing, is that with John, God sent an even greater light than John. The opening verses of John's Gospel are not particularly focused on John the Baptist. His story is told as part of the foundation, part of the preparation for the big story, which is Jesus. So in chapter 1, verse 29, the famous words are recorded. Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's the core of John the Baptist's witness. Jesus is a saviour. He came for Good Friday where he died for the sins of the world as God's lamb. And he came to be victorious over grief and sadness and darkness and death. The tomb is empty. It is gloriously empty. And John the Baptist says, the greater light than my light is shining. The greater prophet than me is among you. Listen to him. Follow him. John the Baptist didn't mind his own disciples leaving him to go and follow Jesus. What we care about as a local church is not to promote ourselves, but to promote Jesus and make him famous. The thing about John's ministry, and I hope it's true about every Christian ministry, is that it lets God's light shine in this dark place. And when the light shines, it exposes a choice that you face and that I face. There really is no middle ground. As we read through these verses from verse 6 to 13, the light is shining. And some people are coming into that light of Christ. John the Baptist himself is bathed in that light. But many people, they defy God and they choose darkness. That's why the cross happened. And that's why the cross was necessary. We still face the same choice that John the Baptist presented to people in the first century AD. Choose, because there is no middle ground. Stand in the light with Christ or stay in darkness. Everyone responds to the light of Christ either by hiding from that light and clinging to darkness or by welcoming the light. I'm not making this up. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, to his own people, but even his own did not receive him. They chose darkness. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed, that's the key to stepping into the light, trusting in Jesus, believing in Jesus, stepping towards Jesus. To all who did believe, he gave the right to become children of God, sharing God's nature, being in God's family. We see the darkness of sin and the ugliness of sin all around us in fear. We see it in the way people respond, not always well, to fear. COVID-19 is a dark thing in a dark world. Fear is a dark thing. Sickness, despair is a dark thing. But we have a choice. We can walk into the light of God through Jesus, his son, or we can grope around in the darkness trying to make sense of things on our own. I'm so glad you're listening. I'm so glad you're with us as part of this message and this service today. And it's my duty to say, there was a man sent from God. His name was John, but he was not the light. It's my duty to say, there was a man sent from God whose name was the Word. And the one who came from heaven, the creator who became human. His name is Jesus. And he really is the light of Easter and the light of the world. And he's the light that you need to step towards. He's greater than John. Greater than that great prophet John. Do you recognize Jesus? Do you trust Jesus? Do you find joy in Jesus this Easter Sunday? 
the response that the message of Jesus received 2,000 years ago through John the Baptist was sorrow over sin and a turning to God from some and a stubborn clinging to dark things from others. Do you believe? If I were to pray now, would you pray that the light of the world would surround you and shine in you? Lord God, we need a saviour and we thank you for sending Jesus not only to suffer, not only to die, but to be raised. The, the end of darkness has come because Jesus is your Son, our Saviour. Help us to believe and trust our souls and lives and futures to him through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning everyone, it's week two of learning this great song, Christ our hope in life and death. I hope you managed to get to grips with verse one and we'll start with that. So we're starting with a familiar bit of the song and then we'll move on to learn the chorus. So starting from the beginning. sing that well. So we'll do the chorus again. Oh, sing Because it's Easter Sunday, I thought it would be good to sing verse 3 of this song, which is a great verse for Easter. Unto the grave what shall we sing? And then one final chorus. Unto the grave what shall Well, thank you so much to Anne and thank you all for being with us for our Easter Sunday worship. May God bless you and give you joy in the days to come. There are just a couple of announcements. 
The elders and deacons are going to be meeting together via Zoom on Tuesday night and they'll all receive uh, log on details about that. We are hoping that we'll be in a position to offer some uh, home groups online um, to complete a study in the book of Daniel and our aim is to manage to get details out for this Wednesday uh, for those who've already been part of a small group you might be able to continue with your existing group or maybe to join a new one and we'll share the details on our usual platforms of that. The Lord's blessing be with you all and we look forward to meeting again next Sunday to keep the, fl the light of the world shining in our city and in our homes and in our hearts. Shall we now receive the Lord's blessing? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, be with you and be with all God's people everywhere. Amen.